At the time of recording this video, we're right in the middle of one of our master classes. If you've taken one before, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't taken one before, then basically we do these huge and totally free classes a few times per year, and at the end we open up membership, and it's kind of a way to introduce people to Acrylic University and what we're all about. There are three main days of free instruction, prizes, and more. At the end of one of our sessions, we did a live Q&A where people were free to ask Jed whatever they wanted, and we answered over 50 questions in a pretty short amount of time. There's a lot of good nuggets of info here, so we hope you enjoy this video. Okay, my yellows and oranges are dull uh, and not opaque enough. Am I using the wrong paint? Yeah, you are. You're probably using a, 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 a student-grade paint. You need professional, especially in yellow and orange. They're really terrible in student-grade paints. Perfect. Um... All right, next. My problem is knowing how to change up the colors and not to strive to match it perfectly. How do you know how or why to change them? Like the sky and trees, for instance. That might be a difficult one to answer quickly. <laughs> it's, uh, you, you know, really, it's just about exaggeration. If I see a color and I think, oh, I kind of like that, or if I want to imagine a color. But I'll tell you what, if you want to know more about that, this next session is for you. It is exactly what we're going to be talking about. Diana is going to do a whole session based on freedom with color. So mm -hmm. come Wednesday, and that will be your answer to that question. Perfect. Um, can you use a brighter color as a base coat? Yes, you can use any color you want as a base coat. I chose gray because it's neutral, and I wanted to have the same neutral background for all of these uh, demonstrations or the, three de uh, the two demonstrations that I'm doing. But you can choose any other color, and a lot of times you just like learn what color you like and maybe the way that it affects the way that you paint. Perfect. Thanks, Jed. Um, all right, next. I'm not able to download the reference photos for the next two sessions. Do I have to wait until the day of? Uh, yeah, actually, I will get those so that you can see them very soon, um, at least for the next session. But no, I'm sorry. The photos were available like yesterday and the day before, I think, for this last one. But yeah, I'll try to get them available later today so that you can look at the ones that are coming next time. Perfect. Um, all right, next. Is the paint used a heavy body? Yes, this is heavy bodied professional acrylic paint. Perfect. How do you use such bold colors but keep the painting from looking childish? Uh, it's all about gray. If you, that's part of the reason I like gray as a background color is because it kind of neutralizes things and then it will show up. And if I don't cover every ounce of it, there will be gray in the painting. But really, if you want to use bold colors, you also need to learn how to use gray. And I don't just mean the background. I mean also just learning how to mix those gray-ish colors. Like not every orange that I mixed was bright. There were oranges that were more dull and mm. reds that were more dull and greens that were more dull. And those really help by like not looking like it's a, you know, drawn with crayons or something like that. Awesome. Um, what constitutes each brush stroke? So if you're using faster choppy strokes or a long squishy stroke? Oh yeah. So I was kind of showing you at one point, but you might've missed it. But if I was doing a limited brush stroke type of homework, I would consider this like whole thing. If I could like go around, like that would be one brush stroke for me. I would cover as much ground as I can, as long as it makes sense with, mm -hmm. you know, my drawing. And then maybe I would come back and try to do, so you can exaggerate your brush strokes and make them as big as you can. Perfect. Uh, are you putting dry brush into your, okay. So we had a couple questions about this. People are asking if you like, do you keep your brush wet when you go to dip more paint in your palette or do you uh, wipe it off with a paper towel or rinse it with water or what are you doing in between uh, grabbing another color from your palette? A lot of times, if it's a similar color, I might just wipe it a little bit. Or I'm, I'm, I mean, I was rinsing it. I have, I have two water buckets here that are off screen, but this one is for dirty. And if I really need it to be clean, I'll do a second wash in there. But um, I dry it off pretty well with paper towels in between. You can see over here also. I have uh, this is where after I wash it, I wipe it off on here. Uh, even if it's just wet. Um, so I'm trying to use a dry herb brush most of the time. Awesome. <clears throat>
Excuse me. I okay. see one question here that says, I would like to see a bigger photo of the day one. Uh, oh, of painting for day one. Yeah, uh -huh. we'll take a picture of this and we will post it on the, the dashboard. Fantastic. Um, for a new artist who finds all three of these methods challenging, which do you recommend using first? I would probably just try painting fast first because mm -hmm. it will be challenging enough but you'll have any tool at your disposal. And then I would try one of the other ones. But I actually think all of them would be useful, but I would probably get a few of the fast paintings under your belt first, because mm. you'll actually get more used to it. The first time will probably be really hard, super hard, you'll probably hate me. <laughs> but second time, it will be a little bit better. Third time, you'll be starting to get, understand how long you have. And after that, you'll actually maybe start really painting intuitively and you might actually like it more than you would ever have thought you would. Sweet. Um, are you painting on a flat surface? Do you ever paint on a vertical surface like an easel? Yeah, so this is actually not totally flat. It's a little bit tilted, it's at an angle. And, um, but I have a wall behind me that has uh, uh, this, you can see kind of behind me, this is an easel that I attach to the wall and it is uh, a totally vertical. Perfect. Um, do you do thumbnail studies or pre-sketches before the 30 minute image? What was that? Uh, do you do thumbnail studies or pre-sketches before the 30 minute image? Oh, you could if you want. Yeah. yeah. If you want to do that. Yeah. That's totally available. And I, I did not would do help that. For, one, but... Yeah. And that definitely helped yeah. for painting confident because you know where you're going. Totally. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, how would you preserve this work? Finish on top. Varnish. Uh, I have, you can do something like this. This is a gloss medium and varnish. You could go over this with that. Or I have some spray varnishes that I use. Uh, here's an example. It's, it's not the exact one that I use right now, but it's something similar. It's an archival uh, varnish. Awesome. Uh, does each reference photo for the homework have a different list of colors? No. Uh, Jed uses a limited palette and can paint pretty much any any scene he needs to with those limited uh, limited colors. Yeah. Uh, this is this is the actual palette that I used for this painting, and uh, I could paint lots of different things with it. But if you have a different red or a different blue, it doesn't matter. I guarantee you, mm -hmm. you can you you might not be able to match a color perfectly, but it's okay. Um, you'll learn something still, even if your paints aren't the exact ones that you might have in the future. Yeah. Could you put a link to the dashboard below the video? Yeah, I'll, I'll add a link in the description for you, Michelle. Absolutely. Um, we can do it right now too. Yeah. I can... I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it on there, bro. Whoops, okay. wrong, <laughs> wrong. Go for it. <sighs> Um, okay, and we'll add, I'll add a clickable one in the description as well. After oh, okay, the, good. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, um, the paint on my brushes peels away. How do I prevent that from happening? The paint on your brushes pe peels away. I'm not exactly uh, sure what he means by that. I'm not sure about that. I don't know. I don't know okay. how to ask answer that. Sorry. Um, just gloss varnish, or do you use matte as well? Which is best? I use gloss varnish because matte has a little bit of uh, like particles in it that stop it from being glossy and it slightly dulls the colors, but gotcha. you can use it. doesn't matter. Um, what is acrylic modeling paste and what is it used for? Acrylic modeling paste is like a very, very thick gesso, kind of. It's very thick and, and it's used to create texture and usually it's used under a painting or perhaps mixed in with paint to create a uh, more textural brush strokes and things like that. Perfect. Good questions, you guys. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, what do you do with leftover paints? Oh, Diana says for peeling paints, use a pr better professional gesso. So that's Diana Shine. She's going to be demonstrating on Wednesday. You guys make sure you come back for that. She's such mm -hmm. an amazing teacher and instructor and everything. So, what was your question this time, Peter? Um, question was... I don't remember, to be honest. Oh, shoot. 
Uh, oh, what do you do with leftover paint? Yeah, yeah, that one. Oh, if I have enough, I will scoop it into a pile and I'll mix it into a gray and then I'll use it later as a gray paint. Yeah, perfect. Um, are we to paint one of the reference photos for homework? You can paint the reference photos or you can use your own. I just updated the dashboard with homework instructions, you guys. So all that stuff will be there for you. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Yes, you can use different photograph to paint. Absolutely. Could I do these paintings using gouache? Yeah, if you want to, for, for sure. Yeah, you mm -hmm. don't have to use acrylics. To be in drawing, does my YouTube account need to match my Facebook account? No, I think you, you, you yeah. just need you just need to give us an email address when you when you turn in your form. Yeah. And then we'll recognize you by your email address. Good question. Um, could you say some artists that have influenced you? Yeah. First artist that I ever learned from, Mike Spob. He is Canadian artist. Uh, we used to live in Vancouver, BC. And then another Canadian, Robert Genn, was my second workshop instructor. My dad is an artist and my mom both had a huge influence on me growing up. Um, we, I also took a workshop from Ovanus Berberian. He's an amazing artist in Idaho from John Michael Carter, who is an incredible artist. He's from Louisville, Kentucky. I took a workshop with Carolyn Anderson on portraits. It was incredible. Uh, I've taken a workshop from John Poon, and he's one of the best instructors that I've ever studied with. Uh, and there's lots more artists that I admire and have learned from, even um, just people that I've gotten to know from being a professional artist and gone, going to plein air conventions. Plus, there are uh, some amazing artists from history that I look up to and have learned tons from. One of them is Sergei Bongart, and there's other Russian artists and uh, like Sergeant artists like him that you just look at their work and you have to be mesmerized. So there's, awesome. there's a lot, but those first ones are the ones that I learned directly from through workshops. Perfect. Um, Robin Bremer, how can I learn to see blocks of color instead of details? Make your photos blurry or like Diana is going to show you on Wednesday. She has a way that she has taken them from being um, like hundreds of values to be like three values. And so there are software things that you can do that will simplify an image for yourself. And sometimes just cheating like that it's not cheating, but it's just a way of like simplifying yeah. the idea in your head uh, so that you're not having to fight your the details that you're seeing. So I would say the easiest probably is to make the image blurry. Like any computer can do that and any uh, software basically yeah. will do that. Or you can upload it to canva.com and make it blurry there. There's a yes. hundred ways to do that. So yeah. Um, and yeah, we use, yeah, we use technology to help us with stuff all the time like you can also turn your painting um gray or grayscale to see the values so don't don't yeah. be afraid to use the, that kind of stuff to help you guys out um, totally what was one trick to making the eye move around from the foreground in this painting i'm not sure or yet. what is one trick yeah I, I would just go with that. What is one trick? Uh, well, so basically there are, there are lots of, uh, there are quite a few different, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, templates, I guess you could say. They're basically like ways of designing a painting. And if I was thinking about what this one is, uh, I might think it's, it might be like, uh, an L like it's kind of like this or maybe it's a little bit of a circle or something like that but there you, you can see paintings that have a distinct S shape to them like like this is a little sketch that I did at some point you know and it's kind of got this S shape but it also kind of has an L so basically working with design what you want is you want a path to lead somebody in and then you kind of want something further back in the painting and that can happen this way, right? I mean, this is weird probably to see, but 
if if these were clouds, it could be in the sky that you you have something that leads in this way, but you also can kind of like bring people back into the painting through clouds and things that are up high. So it doesn't always have to be down low and this direction. It can also work a little bit the other way. But generally people, you do need something that will lead people in from, from this, this side. But it's a very general question and I, I could only give you a kind of general answer right now. Perfect. Um, how do we join the Acrylic University courses? So at the end of uh, on, on Friday, we're going to talk more about the membership and how you can join and uh, all that stuff. It'll be great. Um, will you teach the Wednesday class? No, Diana Shine, uh, an incredible artist that works with us here at Acrylic University is going to teach Wednesday's class, but we will we'll both be here. We'll be we'll be present. Yeah, yeah, I'll be here and then we'll hand it over for Diana to do the demo and it's going to be awesome. You guys are going to love it. I just saw a question about the gray paint I use for underpainting, which it was just student student grade Utrecht neutral gray, nothing fancy about it. It's basically just uh, carbon black, red, yellow, and white, but they make it into just a neutral, neutral gray mixture. Fantastic. Um, uh, so somebody said, I'm a brand new artist. What is gesso? Gesso is something that you don't always need to know that much about because most of the canvases that we or you would probably ever buy, if you're just buying a canvas from a store, it's going to have gesso already applied to it. So mm -hmm. uh, let me just, I'll show you something here so this is called a gesso board this is not a canvas it is a panel but it's coming to me wrapped in plastic and it already has multiple layers of gesso on there that is sanded really really smooth you can see it says ultra smooth right there there are lots and lots of canvases that you can buy that come just the same way and i will try to grab one here so you can see so even even like a cheap canvas like this this is a very inexpensive canvas that i got at michael's and this even this has three i, I believe it has three layers of of gesso on it so you don't need to gesso this again but back in the day when people were mostly painting on unprimed canvas or if they were painting on something um, more like this this is mdf right it's quarter inch mdf you can get something like this and this i did apply gesso to because it needs to be coated you can't just paint straight on here you need something to make the surface uh, ready to get paint and not have the paint soak through or not have the anything from the wood come out this way. So you need to seal that, that and that's what gesso is. It's basically a, a fancy word for primer. Cool. Thank you, Jed. Um, how do you get the stuff off of your hands after? Wash them with uh, water, soap. And if you need something else, the real trick is hand sanitizer because it's alcohol based usually yeah. and it will kind of like eat the acrylic paint away really easily do we include the base coloring time in the 30 minutes time frame no 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 the, no 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 for sure yeah. not no don't don't you just start with a start like with whatever color you choose start with your canvas already toned and and start your timer when you actually start painting yeah uh is, is Windsor & Newton Galleria acrylic paints okay to use? Is it a student grade it's paint? It's okay to use. Yeah, it's okay to use. It is a student grade paint, so it's not going to be as high in pigment load, and it's not going to cover as well, but mm. it is totally fine to use. Do you sketch out your design before painting? Um, we have a running joke here at Acrylic University. Um, Jed, not always, but we always recommend it. <laughs> it's very helpful. <laughs> You can only break the rules if you know them. And I and I, I I'm the only one that really, really knows all the rules because I change them <laughs> and I just changed it for myself today again. 
Uh, now I put it back. You do have to do a sketch. <laughs> Just joke. Um, did you paint on canvas? Yeah, it's a canvas board. Yeah, this um, this is a <clears throat> this is honestly my favorite. They're a little bit more expensive. They're primed linen panels. Uh, if I'm using a panel like this, this is what I'm going to use. They're very, very, very easy to work with. Pull them out of the uh, wrapper and they're ready to go. But these days I'm painting more and more on these. And the reason I am is because I don't like framing paintings. And so I like the way that this feels. This is super smooth and it's really interesting because you can see more brush strokes on it. And uh, that's what oh, that's I use cool. more and more these days. Yeah, so... Um... We will definitely continue going with questions. I just want to say, guys, thank you so much for being so positive and encouraging. Uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, Marilyn, looking forward to session two. Yes, so are we. So are we. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I Honestly, you guys will be so, so uh, just mesmerized with that. And it's going to be great. So yeah. let's go another another few minutes here and then we'll wrap it up. Yep. Do you so wanna... I see. Oh, so yeah. Do you want to end around one? Is that your, yeah, your plan? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, does homework have to be a certain size? No, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I mean, you can you can choose a size. I would keep it relatively on the smaller size. This is 12 by 16. I wouldn't go too much bigger than that if you're trying to get done in half an hour. Yeah. Or, But, I mean, I guess if you chose one of the other methods that weren't time-related, you could do a bigger one. Um, will the chat Although be on... 50 brush strokes will be really hard, too. Sorry, Peter. No, you're good. You're good. Um, will the chat be on the replay too? Yes, it should be if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, yeah. Do you wrap around the paint or do you wrap around paint the sides or a solid color? I think they're referring oh, to I the just canvas. Keep, uh, on those, yeah. those wood, wood, yeah, those panels, wood panels, I just leave it wood. I just leave Perfect. it wood. Um, <clears throat> can you explain the dates after the third workshop session? Yeah, absolutely. So Saturday, we have a we have a Q and A. It's kind of like a, a Q and A. We'll we'll have some some questions. We'll we'll be interviewing some some people who are currently members of Acrylic University, and we will be doing a demonstration. So it's kind of a homework day. Basically, if if you want a little bit of extra time, I'm going to be painting trying to think of the way that we do it. I think I paint on Saturday and Diana paints on Monday. And then we have Tuesday off. And Saturday and Monday are kind of similar. Like it'll be interviews and it will be demonstration and there'll be some time for Q&A. And then Tuesday is a day off and then Wednesday we have the actual masterclass celebration so that's just a fun time where we do some extra things we give away more prizes and we uh, look back at everybody like we try to bring out paintings that we saw people do and we mm -hmm. show them off to everybody it's a really fun event that we do right here on YouTube and that'll be Wednesday evening yes that will be so much fun um Let's see. Do, 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 no do. class tomorrow. Yes, you're correct. So yep. we won't have another class until Wednesday. Can I mix white and black to make that great base canvas? Yes, you absolutely can. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, a couple of people asked about that. Like if you need a pre-mixed gray or if you can use black and white. And no, you can you can mix a gray. You can use a tube gray, whatever you want to do. Um. Yeah, I see this question. Somebody was asking what, what I use. They're called DaVinci Pro Panels, Ultra Smooth. They're just gesso panels, basically just gesso panels that are ultra smooth. Perfect. Um, are the appointments also recorded? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you yeah. mean. Yeah, the sessions are He recorded. means the interviews, I think. The oh, interviews yeah, and uh, the demonstrations, they'll be recorded. Everything will be here on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, dot com forward slash my name jed dorsey uh you will I'm trying to think yeah you'll it's I, I was trying to remember if there was any caps in that but there aren't it's just straight up jed dorsey and it will bring you here you can go to the dashboard that's on your let me see if i can point at it right now 
go to that place right there and you'll find everything that you'll ever want for the masterclass. Yeah. Links, everything like that. Yeah, and we'll 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 add the finished painting photo there as well after the class and all that good stuff. Um, Chris, I'll be away next week. I don't want to miss the new membership date. So we're going to open the membership on Friday. So you'll have a chance then. And we'll we'll talk about that and everything. And then also uh, just pay attention to your email because we'll be sending out emails um, all throughout next week and all that stuff. So you should have plenty of opportunities. And if for some reason you miss it, you can always uh, email support and we can help you out there. Um, Diane, I see this question. Can I add some green and brown into the trees so they aren't so bright like they're on fire? Absolutely. This is all about you figuring out how you want to paint. Never copy something that I'm doing if you don't like what I'm doing, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, someone says, is it, is it important to have oil as the base or does it need to be acrylic? Is gesso oil based? Gesso is acrylic. Do not use oil anything underneath your acrylic paints. Yeah. Just use acrylic based materials if you're using acrylic on top. Awesome. Good questions, you guys. All right. We got... Uh, two minutes left here. Um, so any any last questions that come through? I'll see if there's some I missed maybe. Uh, did, did you have a light angle in mind as you painted? Yeah, I, the, 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 the light was coming from the west. It was evening. I, I knew where it was. So where the light is coming from, it's basically coming from this direction right here. And so that's why I lighten this guy over there. I mean, I exaggerate stuff, so that's mm -hmm. kind of what I do, but the light yeah, is coming from the left-hand side. Um, best way to clean brushes? Well, I just... Personally, I'm not the best person to ask, but Diana, like I said, she has taught me that after you clean it with water, if you, if you clean it out with water, what you can do is you can take a little bit of hand sanitizer, put it in your hand, and you can kind of move your brush around in your hand and it will work out even more of the paint. And sometimes even if it's kind of dried, it will help loosen up dried paint because it's alcohol and it somehow interacts with the acrylic paints and loosens it up. So that's a really good trick to know that you can do after you use water. And there's also things like brush soap and things like that but i've never really used those um perfect somebody I've, I've seen somebody ask this one twice sorry I, I missed it there are a lot of questions but uh they asked uh, what are your thoughts on master's touch acrylics oh i think they're okay i i am not a i'm not a judger on acrylic paints really i i say that because i used basic paint liquitex basics and i use other student grade paints for a very long time i don't think that you have to start using the highest grade paints masters touch paints are from hobby lobby and they are their kind of in-home brand and i think that they're fine i don't think that they're probably as nice as something like this but i don't think that they're very bad and i i don't think if I'm remembering correctly, I don't think that they're student grade paints either. I think that they're somewhere kind of in that artist grade paint, but they might not be quite as good as, as something like this, but they're still yeah. fine. Awesome. So uh, I'll, I'll answer one more question and then just uh, say something real quick. The, Suzanne said for the, uh, sorry, but for the third time, can we use Canson paper for homeworks? And uh, yes, you absolutely can use Canson paper. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you guys for all your incredible questions. Uh, we have a few questions. Like the someone says, I had a problem with the sky. I want to I want to paint the sky first before the trees. What do you think? And guys, the, remember that this is just a, a framework. This is how Jed does it, but um, it's not the optimal way or however you want to whatever you want to do to experiment isn't wrong or anything. It's your painting. It's your artwork. So please experiment and try things and see what happens. Um, yeah, yeah, but totally. uh, yeah. I think that's uh you got